greatest sport from the greatest state in the focus, Lone Star Gridiron. Hey, welcome out to another Lone Star Gridiron video cast. Chris Daly coming to you from Shirts, Texas, where we will shortly have the Civilo Steel Knights going up against the San Marcos Rattlers. But before we get to that, we're going to send you out to Leander, Texas for Eric Weedy with all the breakdown on the Georgetown versus Cedar Park game. You've heard it before, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. It's when we excel and what real service is all about. Benchmark Insurance Group, real service, really. Helmet Graphics brought to you by Texas High School Helmet Project. Visit them at txhshelmetproject.com. Welcome back to Low Star Green Iron Videocast. We're here in Leander, Texas for the 16 5A opener between Cedar Park and Georgetown. Georgetown came into this game undefeated, and Austin Alexander was a big reason for the Eagles' success. Alexander had a great night on the ground, running for 116 yards against the Timberwolves. The linemen did great. They really opened the holes and the, they made it easy for me. The Eagles took a 14-0 lead with Alexander's second touchdown of the night. Well, he's just been solid for us, both blocking and catching the ball and running the ball. And, and uh, you know, he, we're going to give him the ball a lot more this year. But the Timberwolves answered quickly when senior running back Diedrich McKnight ran for 66 of his 121 yards. Georgetown senior quarterback Garrett Gilliland managed the game very well, completing 11 of the 16 passes for 160 yards. Including this second quarter strike to sophomore wide receiver David Kerr. We just continue to work hard and try to get better. And, and in our district, each, each week is, is really tough. Down 21-6 at halftime, the Cedar Park Timberwolves came out of the locker room on a roll. At first, third quarter, they came out and they definitely just drove right down our throat. Um, they knew what they were doing, they knew what they had to fix. Uh, we went to the sideline and our our coaches got with our DBs and uh, figured out what we had to do to stop that. Deidre McKnight capped off this drive with his second touchdown of the night. But the Eagles' knee tightened up and did not give up another touchdown the rest of the game, including several crucial fourth quarter stops. <laughs> Seniors Paul Jahardo and Jason Stubber. Unbelievable. Great team. Uh, a lot of the guys on our team thought we had it at halftime and we were beating them 21-6. Um, but they showed effort in the end and they fought to the end, so we knew we had to come through and fight to the end. <laughs> This stop for Cedar Park to kick a field goal and after a failed onside kick by the Timberwolves. The Georgetown Eagles ran out the clock and won their District 16 5A opener 21-17. I think we're going to win it. It's a hard district, but you yeah, can't underestimate Georgetown. we got another tough game next week and, and for the next six weeks. You don't make the playoffs in this district in week one. We understand that, and we just got to go back to work, and hopefully next week we'll play well again, and, and uh, we'll see how we do next week. The Eagles will host the Vista Ridge Rangers Friday night for homecoming. All right, that was a heck of a win there for Georgetown, and we are just uh, seconds away from kickoff here at Shirts. And uh, we're going to take a quick break and be right back. Gridiron Warriors, take the field in an epic battle that is larger than life. It is called... Texas High School Football. Only one show can bring the greatest sport from the greatest state in the focus. Lone Star Gridiron. All right, the kickoff is underway. 
away. Whoa, exciting, exciting start to the kickoff. It looks like a turnover. Hey, I'm gonna head up to the press box. I'm gonna send it right back to Eric so that he can tell you all the action. Yeah, that's right, Chris. This one started off on an exciting note. Uh, Cibolo Steel recovered the opening kickoff, and we'll see how they do in this District 27-4A opener. After four quick plays, including this 20-yard pass from Jacob Trevino to Anthony Foster. Cibolo Steel had a 7-0 lead within the first minute of the game, thanks to this touchdown by Malcolm Brown. After another fumbled kickoff, senior tight end Michael Robinson gets the Knights to the goal line with this 20-yard catch and great run. The Knights senior quarterback Jacob Trevino sneaks it in to give his team a very quick two-touchdown lead. Beginning of the game, we got those two kickoffs that we returned. That changed a lot of the momentum. We made a bunch of mistakes early, and they took advantage of every one of them. And, uh, you know, we just can't do that. You know, you, we can't dig ourselves that big of a hole and, and try to claw back out of it against such a good team. Steele's defense takes the field for the first time with a 14-point lead. And they stop the Rattlers' wing T offense cold. After the three and out, the Knights continue their barrage of scoring. This time, Ciblo Steele drove down the field, relying heavily on sophomore running back Malcolm Brown. Brown had 180 yards rushing against San Marcos, and he credits it to the big guys up front. O-line did what they did. They do a great job every single game. And that just makes it a whole lot easier on me. I think the guys up front did a great job, and they opened up some lanes, and once he gets into the secondary, he's tough to stop. Halfway through the first quarter, Lone Star Gridiron's number nine team in 4A had a 21 to nothing lead in their district opener. And after this 65-yard fumble recovery for a touchdown by Michael Brown, the Knights had a 28-point lead and complete control of this game. Head coach Michael Jinks explains how these Knights got so good so fast. We opened up this school four years ago, and we played with a bunch of freshmen and a bunch of sophomores, and what we talked about as a staff and as a football program was making our biggest witness, weakness our biggest strength. So we've lived in the waiting room. When they were freshmen and, and young JV kids, we lifted every day, even on game day. And I know that sounds crazy, but I really think we're seeing the benefits from that right now. The Knights' next game will be a crosstown showdown against Shirts Clemens. We got the Buffaloes next. I'm not going to have to say much to our kids after this ball game. Final score, Cibolo Steel 49, San Marcos 17. <laughs> From the Star Gridiron, I'm Eric Weedy. All right, thank you, Eric, for that coverage. And uh, gosh, it, it was a one-sided affair here but uh, there's some positives to take away from both of them. Gosh, you, you really got to hand it to that uh, Cibolo Steel squad, though. A big win for those guys. Hey, and don't forget, guys, head over to LoneStarGridiron.com. Check out the website, the stories, the audio, the video, the uh, forums, you name it. It's all right there. Again, LoneStarGridiron.com. Well, for my good friend Eric, nickname coming soon, Weedy. I am Chris Daly, and we'll see you at the game.